Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Indusor Education. Um, I would like to spend some time just doing some very simple exercises with limits. Um, I have divided it in three different lectures. Today will be the limits as uh, argument goes to infinity. Uh, next lecture will be minus negative infinity and then some kind of a finite number as, um, as a limit point for an argument. Uh, I just decided to increase the number of exercises and that's why I decided to divide it in this way. It doesn't really matter. Um, all right, so this lecture is uh, part of the advanced course of mathematics for teenagers and uh, high school students. Uh, you can uh, view this lecture from unisor.com and I suggest you actually to do all your viewing from this website because it contains uh, detailed uh, notes for each lecture um, plus there is certain educational functionality like you can enroll uh, into a, a course or any part of the course like any particular topic take exam for instance so it's all useful for um, good education so exercises I have uh, six different problems and uh, let me just go one by one a couple of easy ones a couple of more difficult okay first one is so we are talking about x going to infinity i'm talking about obviously positive infinity if i don't mention positive or negative positive is assumed all right now my first function is uh, 2x squared plus 3x plus 4 divided by 3x squared plus 4x plus 5. Well, basically my first three problems are about polynomials. Um, and um, I have the ratio of two polynomials. And my basic principle, which I would like actually you to know, is that forget about all the lower members of the polynomials whenever you have something like this polynomial divided by another polynomial and the uh, argument goes to, in to, to infinity look only for the highest powers so basically in this case the highest powers are the same and the limit would be one would be two thirds the ratio between these coefficients and here is why now let's divide um, everything by x squared on the top and x squared on the bottom. I mean factor out x squared. So it will be x squared of 2 plus 3 divided by x plus 4 divided by x squared over x squared once more. Uh, 3 plus 4 over x plus 5 over x squared. Now, x is going to infinity, so it's definitely not equal to zero. That's why we can um, reduce it. And here we have basically, uh, we, we don't have indeterminate uh, infinity over infinity was, in, uh, was indeterminate limit. But now we don't have this indeterminate limit because every piece of this as x goes to positive infinity goes to zero so what's left left is two-thirds now that's very much dependent on the highest coefficients to be of the same power that's why we have this what if they're not of the same power well there are two cases one case is this when the numerator has a greater power than denominator now what can we do in this case well let's do exactly the same thing x squared 2x plus 3 over x plus 4 over x square x square 3 plus 4 over x plus 
5 over x squared. Now there is absolutely no problems with denominator as x goes to infinity it goes to 3 and numerator as x goes to infinity this is 0 this is 0 and this goes to positive infinity so we have positive positive infinity in numerator and uh, um, um, bounded value around 3 uh, in, in the denominator so what will be the result well infinitely increasing divided by something which is around 3 the bounded obviously it will be in, in infinite increasing so that goes to infinity plus infinity so when you have the power of the numerator greater than the power of denominator you will always have this result regardless of these smaller powers and the last when we have the other way around if I have two here and three here oops and three here well again x square out x square out we have 2 plus 3 over x plus 4 over x square we have 3x plus 4 over x plus 5 over x square and now what we have we have a bounded around 2 value in the numerator because these two are infinitely small numbers as x goes to infinity and here we have infinitely increasing these are go to zero so we have somewhere around two divided by infinitely increasing obviously the result would be infinitely decreasing to zero value because the denominator goes to infinity so again it's because denominator has a higher power than numerator So whenever you have a ratio of two polynomials and you're talking about argument go going to positive infinity, all you have to do is compare the highest powers. Um, if numerator is the same as denominator, then the result would be just the ratio of their coefficients uh, at these highest powers. If numerator is greater than power of numerator is greater than the power of denominator it will go to positive infinity and if denominator is greater it would be going to zero all right so these are simple three simple cases now something which is also simple but you have to just make a little trick actually i think i did explain this before so as x goes to infinity what happens this is um, the uh, infinitely small uh, value so it goes to zero and the sign of something which is tending to zero would tend to zero remember this now this on the other hand goes to infinity infinitely increasing so it's can, kind of an indeterminate uh, infinity times zero. However, you can recognize this as this. So instead of multiplying by x, I divide it by 1 over x. Now what do I have? Let's consider two functions. The first, the first function is 1 over x. The second function is sin x over x as x goes to 0 g of x goes to 1 we know that it's one of the amazing limits which we were touching in the previous lecture now as x goes to infinity this is going to 0 
as x goes to infinity. Now we can apply the theorem about compound functions because right now what we have here it's a g of f of x right so instead of x we substitute 1 over x and we know that this function goes to whatever the limit of this function is you see this 0 corresponds to this 0 so that's why the limit of this is equal to 1 as x goes to infinity so as x goes to infinity f at x goes to 0 and now if argument of g goes to 0 we know that g goes to 1 so the limit is equal to 1 so we're just applying the known uh, limit and the theorem of compounded functions now the last couple of examples uh, might be a little bit more interesting because that re requires certain well a little trick maybe if you wish okay x divided by 3 to the power of x now um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that everybody feels that x which is this 3 over x is something like this obviously 3 over x grows significantly faster at least a little bit further down the line than function x function x grows linearly and 3 to the power of x goes exponentially and we all know that exponential is uh, uh, growing faster than the, li than the linear function I mean there are cer certain cases for instance you have linear function which are w which is very very steep and exponential is very 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 slow like this is for instance the curve as our money are growing in the bank if bank is is, is paying minuscule percentage however however eventually this thing will always overtake however steep the um, linear function uh, will be and we will be proving this actually so in any case right now we have a simple case x over 3 to the power of x and we have to prove that 3 to the power of x really grows significantly faster and if it grows faster as x goes to infinity then the whole thing should actually go to zero I mean that's our natural kind of a guess right question is how we can prove it well we do know certain properties of functions uh, including exponential functions and that's what I'm going to to do right now so what I will do first my plan is first I would like um, to prove that x is smaller than 2 to the power of x now why do I need it well because I cannot really divide x by 3 to the power of x and get some analytical calculations because they're not mixing this is linear function this is exponential function these are not mixing but if I will prove this then x to the x divided by 3 to the power of x would be less than 2 to the x divided by 3 to the x which is 2 thirds to the power of x and we know that if this is a smaller than one base for exponential function and this is smaller than one then it will go to uh, zero as as x goes to infinity it's just one of the properties of exponential functions and by the way I might actually remind you that there is a very nice um, a lecture actually a couple of lectures on exponential functions in this course in the algebra chapter or part of this course all right so that's my plan now if I will do this if I will prove this then this immediately follows which is equal to this which is basically obvious that this will go it's just straight from exponentiality exp from, from the properties of exponential function with the base less than one so 
that's basically the only thing which I which which I need to 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 prove rigorously as much as possible rigorously. I mean, there are always kind of limits to rigorousness. So let me concentrate on this because this will follow basically automatically. How can I do that? Well, again, I mean, if you will try to solve this equation, for instance, it's not easy because, again, these are two different functions and they're not mixing together. We know how to solve linear equations, we know how to solve quadratic equations, but we don't know how to solve these mixtures, right? So we have to do something else. And here is what I suggest. Look at the function y is equal to x. Well, it's a linear function and it's monotonically increasing. Now, if x is natural number, n, n plus 1, we know basically what x is, as we know, and we know what 2 to the power of x actually is. But what if x is in between? Then 2 to the power of x is kind of difficult thing. R rational exp exponents, uh, it needs certain explanations. But, but here is what we do know. We know that this function is monotonically increasing which means that we always have such an equation. x is always between two integer numbers, right? Now, 2 to the power of x is also monotonically increasing, and that's one of the properties which we have proven actually again in the course of algebra when I was talking about um, exponential functions. So 2 to the power of x is, as monotonic function, also between this and this, if x is between n and n minus 1. So what I'm going to prove, I'm going to prove this, that n plus 1 less than or equal to 2 to the power of n. But I will prove it for any n, well, greater than maybe some 1 or 2 or whatever, after some beginning. And if I will prove this, then from this, this would obviously be less than this. Because this is less than this, and this is greater than this, right? So that's obviously would be the case. So that's all I would like to do right now, to prove this for integer n's. Now, for integer, it's easier. Why it's easier? Because I can use the method of mathematical induction. So let me just do it, and this is, and this is trivial part, obviously. How can I prove that n plus one is less than two to the power of n? Well, let's just check it out. For n is equal to one, this is two, and this is two to the power of one, which is two. But for n, for it, it's equal. But for n is equal to two, this is three, this is four. 3 less than 4. For n is equal to 3, it's 4, 8, etc. Obviously, this grows much faster, but let's prove it. How can we prove it? Well, again, using the method of mathematical induction. First, for n is equal to 2, it's true, because it's 3 and this is 4. Let's assume that for certain n equals to k, um, k plus 1 is less than 2 to the power of k, and now we will put k plus 1. Now, what do we have to prove? We have to prove that, that n plus 1, which is k plus 1 plus 1, less than 2 to the power of k plus 1. But I already know that this, by my induction assumption, is less than 2 to the power of k plus 1. Now, and obviously this is less than 2 to the power of k plus 2 to the power of k, right? Because 2 to the power of k is greater than 1. And this is 2 to the power of k plus 1, which is what we actually have to prove. Right? For n is equal to k plus 1, this is k plus 2, and this is 2 to the power of k plus 1. So that's easy. Basically, that's it. That's a complete proof of 
this equality inequality sorry and from this inequality as I was just saying before immediately follows that this goes to zero because x over 3 to the power of x is smaller than than two-thirds in the power of x and that's obviously goes to zero by the way I didn't mention it but um, it's kind of uh, I assume that you understand you see since x to the 3x is greater than 0 and less than 2 to the power of x over 3 to the power of x which is equal to 2 thirds to the power of x and this goes to 0 this is again a typical example of the squeeze theorem right that's why this also goes to 0 or two policemen and a drunk all right, so that's relatively easy and very simple kind of usage uh, of uh, monotonicity and, uh, and induction. So using the monotonicity of these functions, um, we have basically reduced the problem to only integer argument. And for integer argument, we uh, could do it by induction. Um, let's do something similar right now. Let's, uh, let's prove that ax plus b would be less than 2 to the power of x. And let's consider that a is greater than 0 just for it. Okay? So we, were, we have proved that x is less than 2 to the power of x. Let's just make a more general thing. Can that be proven? Yes, I just mentioned before that even if it's very steep when A is really very large and even in this case we eventually overcome no matter how steep this linear function is. How can I prove that? Well, again, absolutely similarly. We uh, know that AX plus B is a linear function so it's monotonic. So obviously we can always find for any X something like this where it's in between two integer variable so ax plus b would be um, less or equal to a n plus 1 plus b or if you wish a n plus b plus plus a plus a which is actually a n plus c if you wish if b plus c is equal to c it's still a constant right so i will prove that for any constant this would be less than this not immediately not was for n is equal to to one but starting at certain point which obviously depends on how steep my a actually is because if a is very large then it will go all the way up right and two to the power of n in the beginning it's not really so steep it goes steeper and steeper and eventually it, it will overcome so anyway, let's just prove it by induction. So first, let's try to find where exactly my first um, beginning. I cannot start from n is equal to 1. I should start from something else. So what should I start it uh, from? Well, um, obviously, um, we can start it from something like this. Um, a n plus c would be less than a uh, plus c times n, right? n is natural number. So here, this is a n plus c n, and this is plus c, but n is natural, so obviously right sink is, is greater. Now, how can I find... Now let's choose n is equal to... Uh, what should it be equal to? Uh, so that 2 to the power of n would be greater than this. Um, let's just think about it. Yeah, something like this. This is less than than a plus c 
2 to the power of n, right? Because we have already proven before that n is less than 2 to the power of n. So now what I have to do is um, well, um, something like n should be equal to um, no, that's probably not a good idea, that's too much um, so what should we start it with, so the 2 to the power of n should be greater than a, a plus c a plus c n um, well um, oh here it is um, so let's divide it by 2 to the power of n so I will have uh, 1 greater than a plus c n over 2 to the power of n let's divide by a plus c n to the 2 power of n less than 1 over a plus c okay here is what I can say we have already proven that n over 2 to the power of n goes to 0 it's infinitely small so eventually it will be less than a uh, 1 over a plus c and stay that way so for any um, epsilon, if you wish, we can find such delta, if you remember, that it will be less than this. So this would be our epsilon. So there is always some kind of a number n after which it would be smaller than epsilon. So that particular number of n, which we know exists because we have proven that this goes to zero, this n would be our beginning. So our first statement Okay, let's put n equals to some initial value. Uh, from this initial value on, we will have this particular inequality uh, true. So this is our first step. n is equal to n0, which depends on... Now we're talking about what? We're talking about a x plus b should be um, less than 2 to the power of x, right? So we have found, based on a and b, we have found some kind of a number, n0, from which we can start already uh, thinking about going forward. So graphically, if this is my ax plus 0, this is my 2 to the power of n, somewhere they will cross. And starting from this point, my 2 to the power of x would be greater. So this is the point where I start. We know it exists because we have already proven that n over 2 to the power of n goes to 0. Now let's apply our induction again. So let's assume that at n is equal to k, a k plus b less than 2 to the power of k. Now let's uh, set n is equal to k plus 1. So what do we have? We have a k plus 1 plus b it should be less than 2 to the power of k plus 1 right but we know that this is a k plus b plus a right if you will open now a k plus b is less than this by assumption we can say that this is plus a right and now but now that's what I need actually so with sufficiently large beginning of this when we actually know that in the beginning my initial uh, condition is already uh, is already set I know that 2 to the power of k is greater 
than this. And obviously, since k is integer, so it's obviously this thing is smaller than 2 to the power of k. So a is smaller than 2 to the power of k. So that's why I can say that this is less than 2 to the power of k plus 2 to the power of k, because a is smaller than 2 to the power of k. And that is, and that is equal to 2 to the power of k plus 1. So our induction logic works fine. So all I was just using that this thing is uh, this thing is less than 2 to the power of k and that's why I substituted, I increased actually from a to the 2 power of k. Okay, so that completes this. So not only I have um, x divided by 3 to the power of x, I actually have proven that any ax plus b divided by 3 to the power of x would also be infinitely small variable because, um, because the numerator is less than 2 to the power of x eventually. We are talking about x going to infinity. So with sufficiently large x, the numerator would be less than 2 to the power of x and 2 thirds to the power of x goes to 0. Okay, so any linear function. How about quadratic function? Okay, one more uh, little exercise. So we have x squared divided by 3 to the power of x. I would like to prove that this is also going to 0. And for this, I would like to prove this in exactly the same fashion. How to prove this? Well, again, n, x, n plus 1. So let me just prove that n plus 1 squared would be less than 2 to the power of n with sufficiently large n. How can I prove that? Well, again, let's do it by induction. If n is equal to, let's say, what, uh, for instance, 3, we have 4 square, which is 16. No, not enough. Uh, n is equal to 4. This is 5, 25. Okay. n is equal to 4. It's already good because this is 5 square 25 and this is, oh no, too small, 5. This is 6 square 36 and 5, 32, also not enough. 6. Uh, 7 square 49. 2 to the power of 6 is what? 64. Okay, now we have it greater. Alright, so starting from n is equal to 6, I would like to prove so first n is equal to 6 uh, n plus 1 is squared is less than 2 to the power of n. Good. Now, assuming that for n is equal to k, I have k plus 1 squared less than 2 to the power of k. Now, let's set n is equal to k plus 1. So what do I have? k plus 1 plus 1. So it's k plus 1 squared plus 2 k plus 1 plus 1. Now, I know that this is less than, this is less than 2 to the power of k plus 2 k plus 1 plus 1. Now, this thing is a linear function of k. So basically, I know that 2 to the power, uh, sorry, uh, 2 k this is 2k plus 3. I know that 2k plus 3 less than 2 to the power of k with k sufficiently large. So, whatever the function, whatever the, uh, whatever the number which is sufficiently large to make this thing uh, correct, I will add to this one if it's necessary. In this case, actually, I don't think it is necessary because this thing even for k is equal to 3 9, no, 4, uh, 8, 11, yeah, 
with k is equal to 4, it's already true and all greater. So basically, we started from 6, so we are safe. So this thing we can always use. So this thing is less than 2 to the power of k plus 2 to the power of k, which is equal to, which is equal to 2 to the power of k plus 1, and our induction is working fine. So basically, um, I can continue this type of proof, if you wish, for a polynomial of any degree. And actually, any polynomial p of x divided by 3 to the power of x would be eventually going to zero, because the polynomial itself would eventually be less than 2 to the power of, power of x. And that was my last problem which I wanted to discuss today. Um, how about um, the, you just go to the website unisor.com and uh, read again these problems, whatever um, I have today discussed, and try to solve them yourself. That would be a very good exercise. And basically that's it. Thank you very much and good luck.